Well, hello again, and good to see you. Um, it's also good to hear from you, and uh, I do enjoy getting feedback. Uh, we had quite a lot, actually, from uh, one of these thoughts that I did a few weeks ago about learning lessons from incidents. And a lot of you said, well, yeah, but we don't know about these incidents. We're not taught about them. In fact, I even had a, an email from my sister, who's not in the industry at all. She's a, a legal lecturer um, in the States who said, well, you know, being in the hazmat business and not knowing about these hazmat incidents, it's like being a, an English professor who's never heard of Charles Dickens. Um, maybe. Um, so I thought what I would do with a few of these videos is to run through a few incidents that I know about, and you probably should if you're in the business, um, that highlight some of the things that um, you as an as a operator uh, or as a trainer or as a trainee um, need to take into account. Uh, the one thing I have noticed um, is that uh, human ingenuity is such that despite the fact that most reputable companies anyway will have procedures, written guidelines, written instructions on how to carry out tasks, some individuals will find a way to uh, do it differently um, in the belief that perhaps you know, it's more efficient to do it in a different way or it'll save time and do a better job. Um, and you can tell that at the back of their mind, what they're thinking is, you know, I'll we'll do it this way. What's the worst that can happen? Well, the worst that can happen is this sort of thing. Um, you may, if you're in the, in the business of moving chemicals in bulk, uh, have heard of Stolt Nielsen. Stolt's uh, bulk shipping company, Stolt Tankers, is a very reputable organization, one of the biggest chemical tanker operators in the world. And of course, they you know, have um, procedures for doing everything. The case in point um, involves their uh, 25,000 tonner uh, Stolt Valor, uh, built in 2003. Um, and what happened to it one day in, uh, just checking, March 2012, it was off Jubail, uh, Saudi Arabia at the time, with a cargo of MTBE and isobutanol uh, heading for Bahrain, I think, um, and had unloaded uh, some of its cargo. So there were empty tanks, which needed to be cleaned and gas-freed before it got to the next port. I understand, from what I've been told about this incident, that the mate had... Uh, come up with a plan to do this work with one of the deckhands uh, and then got on his, uh, his rest period um, saying, you know, don't do it until I get back. Um, at which point the deckhand, thinking perhaps, you know, if I do it while he's asleep, I'll earn some brownie points or I can get it done quicker and then have my break. Who knows what he was thinking? But certainly one of the things he was thinking was, well, what's the worst that can happen? Uh, the worst that can happen, of course, is that there was an explosion uh, which killed him, uh, which is why we don't actually know what was going through his mind. Fortunately, the rest of the crew were uh, rescued by a passing U.S. naval uh, vessel. Uh, the uh, ship was um, on fire, badly damaged. It took quite a while to get it into port. Um, most ports around there didn't want anything to do with it. Um, and eventually it was scrapped. So that one decision made by that deckhand to carry out the work um, that he was probably not qualified to do on his own um, caused the loss of that ship and cost the company, well, the company's insurers, uh, a whole bunch of money. So if you, as an operator, somebody working in the business, are ever tempted to think, well, why don't I do it this way? It'd be quicker. What's the worst that can happen? Just think of that case. And if you want more details, like most of these incidents, it has its own Wikipedia page now. Look up Stolt Valor and, uh, and you know, learn the lessons from it. I'll come back with another one next week. But for now, thanks for watching.
Bye.